All right. Hi. Hi, Hongman. Thanks so much for joining me today uh, to talk about the Risk Five Mentorship Program. So first, I'll share my screen and just give a really quick overview of the Risk Five International Mentorship Program for those of you that aren't aware of this program. So the Risk Five Mentorship Program uh, is held on the LFX Mentorship page, which looks like this. You can see all the different mentorships that are open for application or will be open or have already passed. Um, in order to apply for a mentorship position, you just want to go to risk5.org uh, and go to the mentorship page, which can, which can be found under community and then risk five mentorship program. So you can see a quick video here, if you'd like, of a past uh, mentee and their program. And this is where you'll find all of your timelines, all the links to apply. If you're interested in being a mentor, you'll find that link here. In fact, it's live right now for the fall 2022 session. The things you should know about the mentorship program as a mentor, you propose a mentorship and then Risk 5 International selects a certain number of mentorships that we pay for. So these are paid uh, mentorships for the mentee, which is a great opportunity for them to learn about Risk 5 uh, and also participate in the project while learning from someone who has um, a high level of skill. So the mentorship program runs for either a part-time, which is 20 hours a week for six months, or full-time position, which is 40 hours a week for three months. So um, now that you've got a real quick overview of the mentorship program, I'd like to introduce you all to Hongbin, uh, who has recently uh, been a mentor and has been just a fantastic addition to the Risk 5 team. And so I'll let you introduce yourself um, and tell us about your mentorship program and why you decided to be a Risk 5 mentor. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Megan, and uh, uh, I very appreciate the introduction about Megan and about the whole project. Uh, actually, I prepared a slide to show my uh, uh, pr presentation. And that would be great. I, uh, yeah, please share them. Yeah, have you ever shared the screen? Yes, I, I think uh, I, I can uh, introduce myself first. And my name is Hongbin, and uh, I'm from Intelligent Software Research Center and in the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Um, I'm very happy to introduce our Risk 5 mentorship project uh, on the LFX platform. And the, the title of the project is uh, MLIR Convolution Vectorization. And today I will introduce the background and the outcomes of our project. And as for the backend part, uh, uh, we focus on how to accelerate the convolution for the risk five backends. Uh, as we all know that uh, the convolution has a wide range of applications. Uh, for example, we can detect the edge of the image using the conv convolution. And in the deep learning side, uh, convolution operations are used to form the neural network. And we can use the CN model uh, such as uh, mobile night uh, to classify the image. And the convolution is actually the CPU intensive operation. So the acceleration is very important. And actually uh, there are different approaches to achieve the acceleration. And we have some research uh, in our project and summarize the following common algorithms. Um, and they are the FFT based and remigrate based algorithm. And we can also use the uh, image to column and use the JM algorithm. And we can also use the uh, vectorization based algorithm. And uh, in the implementation, uh, choose which algorithm actually depends on the use cases and the hardware backend. Um, our target backend is uh, the CPU with the CMD or the vector extension. So we tend to use the vectorization based approach and we want to implement uh, the algorithm in MIR with the vector dialect. And now let's see the vector abstraction in the MIR. Um, this graph shows the lowering path uh, of the MIR dialects, and we, we, we can focus on the vector level. As, uh, as we can see, uh, the vector level abstraction supports the uh, backend specific dialects. Uh, like uh, we can see the AMX dialect and the uh, x86 uh, vector dialect, 
uh, therefore the uh, Intel processors. And on the ARM side, we can uh, find the ARM Neon and the ARM SVE dialect. Uh, we can clearly uh, notice that the MLR doesn't support the RISC five specific dialect, right? So uh, according to the above analysis, uh, our uh, project should add the uh, uh, RISC five vector extension uh, dialect in MLR and uh, uh, implement the convolution of vectorization in uh, with MLR uh, vector oper uh, operations. Um, and for the next part, uh, I will show the outcomes of our uh, project. And uh, this is the overview of our outcomes. And we implement the algorithm and add the RVV support in MLR. Uh, apart from that, we also build a uh, framework around them. Um, we have a compiler framework and the backend framework. Um, uh, in the compiler side, uh, we can uh, optimize the upstream Conf2D operation, but uh, the uh, Conf2D operation doesn't have some image processing features uh, such as the anchor point, the boundary processing, and so on. So we also create a custom Coral2D uh, operation for image processing applications. And uh, in order to uh, optimize uh, uh, these op uh, um, uh, operations, uh, we build a compiler tool that equip with the vectorization algorithms. Um, for the algorithms, uh, we actually choose the uh, coefficients for casting strategy for the uh, algorithm. Uh, for the Conf2D and the Coral2D operations, uh, the basic idea of the algorithm is uh, similar, but uh, the implementation is a little bit different because we should consider the image processing features uh, for the Coral 2D. Uh, and the whole strategy uh, is originally uh, designed for the CMD architecture. And we think this, is, uh, this strategy um, it can even perform better on the RV backends uh, because uh, the RV can actually take the vector and the scalar as the operand. Uh, in this case, uh, this uh, algorithm on the RV backends will never so, uh, suffer from the broadcast uh, overhead. I mean, uh, so uh, we think the approach uh, can uh, very uh, suitable for our uh, RV side. Um, and we uh, actually, sorry, okay, we, we, we can back to uh, the, the overview, and uh, we also designed an uh, auto config me mechanism to help the tool achieve the better performance. Mm -hmm. And the uh, auto config will detect the hardware uh, and choose a proper configuration for the tool. And for the RV dialect, we finished the proposal and the RFC patch, and we have posted them to the MLIR upstream. And more in detail about the RV dialect. Uh, first of all, uh, we define uh, RVV operations and RVV intrinsic operations in the dialect. And in order to uh, support the scalable vector type of the RVV, we uh, discuss this type with the ARM SVE people. And now MLR uh, have already uh, provided the uh, unified vector, uh, scalable vector type. And we are using the unified version in the current patch. Uh, apart from that, we also provide the conversion and translation to uh, connect the RVV dialect with the uh, ILVM uh, level. Uh, and uh, at last, we use the QMU to build the in integration test and evaluate the correctness of our work. And currently, uh, the RFC patch is in the review process. Back to our uh, compiler framework. Uh, it also depends on uh, the LVN, MIR, and the RISC-V tool chains. And people can build the end-to-end -end application with our uh, compiler framework. And uh, let's see uh, the, the, uh, the, the benchmark uh, framework now. And the, the framework built on the top of uh, the Google benchmark and we provide some operation level and domain specific level uh, benchmark cases. And uh, the whole uh, framework can give us an evaluation report to show the performance difference between our approach and the SOTA uh, works. And here uh, we use uh, the, uh, the edge detection evaluation as an as a example. Um, and this is uh, from our uh, background uh, 
uh, it's from our whole uh, framework. And uh, the origin uh, image is uh, 1024 cross 1024. And we are using uh, the different sizes of a software kernel and which is from three cross three to nine cross nine. And our core 2D operation has the same feature with uh, the uh, OpenCV filter 2D. And as we can see, uh, the, the result shows that our approach can run faster than OpenCV. And in other considerable numbers of cases, our approaches, uh, our approach uh, also performs better than OpenCV. And we are very happy to share this result. Okay, and uh, in conclusion, in, uh, in this uh, LFX mentorship project, we have three mentees and they did a very great job and work as a team to uh, complete uh, this impressive task. Uh, and the NOIR RVV dialect uh, will contribute to the NOIR upstream. Uh, and the convolution vectorization research uh, is in the body compiler community. Uh, at, the, uh, at last, uh, I would like to uh, say uh, thanks uh, to Megan and the other LFX uh, uh, people, and they actually give me, uh, give us a lot of support to make sure the projects can go smoothly, and uh, we uh, really appreciate this. Uh, and that's the end of my presentation or the talk. Uh, and I, I remember you you also asked me that um, why I, I I want to do this uh, mentorship uh, right. Uh, so uh, from the very beginning, and uh, I have some basic idea about the MLR and uh, RIS-5. And at that time, I, I want to contribute my uh, code to the MLR upstream and explore some, some research point uh, in my uh, local uh, community. So at that time, I heard the IFX uh, platform can uh, attract outstanding contributors. Uh, so I put the uh, uh, the project on the platform and hoping to see uh, if anyone was interest, uh, interested in my idea. And um, uh, it, because uh, in my firm belief that uh, the MLR and the RISC V can uh, together form a very large ecosystem. And uh, because um, they have similar modular and extensible uh, features, and building an ecosystem, uh, building the uh, ecosystem is actually not the task for just one or two people, right? So uh, I hope to uh, get more and more people involved in the contributing uh, idea and working on them. And uh, yes, I uh, this is why I want to do this uh, mentorship. <laughs> Yeah, it's fantastic. It sounds like you had a great teamwork going on, you know, having you obviously had a, a number of people that were interested in the project and you were able to select those uh, who you really felt like would be the best uh, fit to work on this project. So it's it's awesome to see and, um, you know, congratulations to the whole team on on working through this project. So that's awesome. Um, do you have time for a few more questions? Cool. Um, what do you feel like as the mentee uh, or as the mentor, and what do you feel like the mentee took away from this program? Uh, yes, I, th I think uh, me and my mentees uh, took away some uh, good memories as far as the, from this project. And uh, more in detail, uh, as for the mentees, I think uh, they gained the exposure to the MLR and, uh, and the RISC V and especially for the uh, vector extension and the vectorization part. Uh, as for this project, um, they, they are familiar with the, the, the use of the uh, RISC-V uh, RISC uh, tool chains mm -hmm. and MLIR ecosystem, uh, the infrastructure for the uh, optimization. And I think they, they also improve their generic skills in the open source community, uh, such as okay. uh, uh, communicating with each other and writing meaningful code and they can create uh, detailed documentations and so on. Um, more importantly, I hope that my, uh, my project can help them have a deeper understanding of the RISC five and MLR. Uh, I think this can help them uh, to contribute more meaningful things in the future. Uh, and I also think they can give back uh, to the community in the future. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, and as for me, uh, I have uh, uh, very lucky uh, to meet these uh, uh, great contributors, and I think uh, we have become friends, uh, and we will continue working on more uh, 
uh, projects together, I think. And actually, I, I also learned from them. And uh, they, are, they, they usually give me some good ideas. And I'm, I'm very appreciate that my mentees and I have a great time during this uh, project. That's awesome. It sounds like it's really supporting that idea of contributor culture and uh, creating that community, right? You know, creating connections with people from all across the world. And what a cool experience that you're able to connect over something you're all passionate about and interested in and, you know, really contribute to the to the bigger ecosystem that is Rick Five. So yes. awesome. And last question, would you do it again? Yes, I, I enjoy doing this and I want to keep doing this. Uh, even for this project, uh, there are a lot of things to do. And actually, uh, we have built some uh, basic support in the MLR and RISC 5 ecosystem, and we see them as the cornerstone. So it means uh, we can complete more impressive work on the top of it. So apart from that, um, I, I actually enjoy uh, meeting more contributors and hope to generate more fantastic ideas and do interesting things together. So I, I, I will keep doing this. It's awesome. It's just the beginning of all the things that the community can can do together. And, um, you know, I thank you for your honest um, feedback on the program and for telling us about it. I think it's a, a great opportunity for the community, whether you're interested in being a mentor or a mentee, come and share your knowledge, come and build community, meet other people who are interested in um, similar areas of expertise uh, and come learn, you know, come learn from each other. Everyone is learning, both the mentor and the mentee. It's a really great program, um, especially for students that are interested in getting more involved in Risk Five. Uh, it's a great opportunity uh, for you to contribute and learn more. So thank you so much for your time today. I'm really happy to hear from all the mentors and mentees, just what a great program this has been for them. And we're looking forward to doing a lot more in the future. Yeah, thanks, Megan. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for listening.